My name is Cashman and today I'm going to go over everything that you need to know about noble actions in Kingdom Maker. If you're new to Kingdom Maker, I suggest checking out our beginner's guide going over the basics of nobles in Kingdom Maker first. Nobles are essential to the success of your kingdom. They could lead your armies in battle, grow your noble family, explore dungeons, boost your city and development and progression, but most importantly, they can be used to interact and influence other nobles throughout the country. But how how do you do this? For any noble to interact with another noble, they have to be in a common space together. The most common space for noble interaction is within a kingdom's keep, but you can also take noble action at a trading post. To summon a noble to another player's keep, simply click on a kingdom in the country map and either click summon or enter the kingdom's keep and click on the family tab. Here you can select which of your nobles will enter the other player's keep. After your noble travels to the player's kingdom, they will appear in the other player's keep but in the foyer. Now tap on your noble and select interact. Pick a noble you would like to interact with and select greet. All available actions will be displayed including their success rate. The success rate of actions are determined by the noble's level, traits, talents, and even doing research at the academy. Certain actions, if successful, will prompt follow-up actions and this is where it gets interesting. There are a lot of different actions that you can take. Some pause positive and some negative. One action that your noble can take is threatening another player's noble, and this will enable additional hostile actions if successful. One of these actions includes assault, and if successful, the other player's noble will be wounded and be vulnerable to getting captured. You can find and equip different weapons and each weapon dealing a different amount of damage and some of these weapons even have bonus side effects. <laughs> if your assault is successful, the action of capture becomes available. Capturing a noble will have them jailed in the dungeon of your keep. Marshals are generally the best role for these assault and capture actions. And now that you've successfully captured another player's noble, you have some options. You can release them, return Turning them to their home keep right away. Eh, kind of boring. Or you can send the other player a ransom requesting resources in exchange for the prisoner. The proposed ransom will be shown in the chat between the two players and can be negotiated. If accepted, the ransom is paid and the noble is released. Simple. Easy as that. This kind of happened to me before. My beloved Gary was captured and the ransom was for 154,000 stone. After a heavy negotiation and a lot of pity. Huzzah, Gary was returned. I only had like 1.8 stone at the time, so... The last option that you have for the captive noble is, is to execute them. The decision of execution will be displayed in the chat between the two players, and you do have the option to cancel the execution, don't worry. Or you can commit the execution and the noble is killed and lost forever as if he's been thrown into the volcano. These type of actions do have some positives, being able to negotiate with another player and receive a lucrative amount of resources from a ransom. But these hostile actions do come at a cost. Every action that you take with another player affects your rapport with them. Your rapport determines if you are friend or foe with another player and having bad rapport will not allow you to summon any nobles into the other player's keep or even view it for that matter. Rapport decreases with every hostile action that you take, but you can also increase it with any positive action that you take. Sure, not being able to send a noble to another player's keep it doesn't really sound that bad. A small price to pay for some easy and free resources, am I right? The problem is making too many enemies with other players really puts a target on your back. And you never really know which of these players have friends and which of these friends have very big, big, big big armies. Yeah, so uh, make sure you're careful. Another action that your noble can take is bribing another player's noble. This action will cost some silver to initiate, and the success rate is determined by the amount of silver used compared to the amount of silver the other player has. So players with less total silver are easier to bribe. And if a bribe is successful, two new options will appear. Open the gates, and Get Intel. Get Intel gives you a report containing which troops they have, where all their family members are located, as well as the location of 
all their alliance members. This can be very helpful for you and your alliance if you're planning an attack in the near future. And open the gate, well, as the name says, open the gates to the city, giving the next player to attack the city a very huge advantage. An icon will be displayed above a city showing that the gates are open, but only for the player that initiated the action. But whoever attacks the city first will get the advantage and the gates will be closed after the battle ends. Two other hostile noble actions you can take are sabotage and heist. When visiting another player's keep, you can choose to sabotage a room. Simply drag and drop your noble into a room and help boost it. Click on your noble and then click sabotage. This sets the room on fire, forcing all nobles to leave the room and harms any noble that was boosting the room. You can also send a noble to another player's treasury and perform a heist. Drag and drop your noble into their treasury, click on your noble, and click heist. By doing this, you steal as many resources as your noble can carry. But if you are caught sabotaging or performing a heist, you guessed it, you're gonna lose rapport with the other player and your noble will immediately be returned to your keep. Using these actions correctly can give your kingdom a competitive advantage over other kingdoms, but you have to remember that there are costs to these hostile actions. Would you like it if another player threatened, bribed, executed, and ransomed any of your nobles? Yeah, I, I think I would be pretty mad. So just make sure that you don't overuse these actions and end up putting a target on your back. Hold up, are you saying that other players can take hostile actions on me? Is there anything that I can do to stop them? Of of course there is! You can assign a noble to guard a specific room within your keep by simply dragging and dropping them into the room of your choice. Guards have a chance to detect, stop, or even counteract any action performed on a noble either boosting or helping in the same room that they are in. So if there is a noble that you don't want to get captured, well, make sure that there's a guard with them at all time. Shing! Like me. Now you know some of the basics of noble actions within Kingdom Maker. If you have any questions about noble actions, well, make sure you comment them down below. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more Kingdom Maker content like this. And feel free to try Kingdom Maker today by using the link in the description below. Good luck with your nobles. Just remember to try not to make too many enemies out there. All right?